Now, if you're new to this, you're going to wonder, what's he waiting for? Or, when are we going to start? And of course, the implication behind that question is that meditation is something that you do. And that's a fallacy of many meditators. then meditation becomes just another doing. And you can put it in your schedule somewhere after all the appointments and whatever you have to do, then you do the meditation. But meditation is really about finding the dimension of depth in yourself, which is not a doing. It's discovering or sensing a deeper level within yourself, which we could call being. Now you can't really do anything to find being, because being is prior to doing. And it's always already there. as the essence of all life, including the essence of yourself. And now again, if you are new to this, you may wonder, what's he talking about? How do I find being? Being is all-pervasive, but because it's so all-pervasive, it's so easy to overlook. Just as easy as it is for a fish to overlook the eternal fact of water. Because it's so all pervasive. And so the fish says, Water, I've never seen it. I've looked everywhere. So, what does that mean, this analogy? There's something all-pervasive that is both within and without. And that is the essence of who you are. And that is where your, where your sense of identity ultimately derives from. So as we sit here together,
Can you become aware of the simple fact that you are? The fact of being, the fact that I am. right now. To give you another pointer, can you become aware of your own presence here without which there would be no sounds to listen to? There would be nothing to see. What is it that makes the listening and the seeing possible? That's the dimension of depth. That's ultimately where your sense of identity comes from. You can't define it, it just is. You just are. When you become aware of that, all that it really means is not so much that you become aware of something, but you become aware of the fact of awareness. Still, when I put it into language, it still seems as if you were aware of something, because that's how a sentence is constructed, subject and object. But that's not the reality of it. The reality of it is Awareness becomes aware of itself. It's not two, but one. And awareness is consciousness. Consciousness that has become aware of itself. And that's so all pervasive, that's always in the background of your life as a deeper sense of I am or of beingness or of presence. But you get distracted and seduced by all the things that happen and that you do and continuously consciousness identifies and gets attached to all the things that occur, especially the thoughts in your mind. Consciousness becomes seduced into losing itself in every thought. And then you don't know who you are anymore. You get a false sense of identity and you don't feel enough, and you feel there's something missing, and that you need more to to grow in your sense of identity, and it never is enough. And here, in the dimension of depth, you are already enough. There's already a sense of completion, of fullness, and aliveness. You don't need to become more alive. 
you are already alive. So another way of putting it, it is you become aware of the very aliveness that you are, the life that you are, which is one with the totality of life, the one life. 